Bless God, bless God. Welcome to Life in Christ in the National Church. Welcome to our Sunday school time. We honor God this morning that the Lord has us being intentional about giving God our first fruits, about spending time in the Lord on our Sunday morning, on the day of worship. We honor God that the Lord would allow us to open up the word of God and glean and learn from our Sunday school lesson. This is such a blessing because I always say the heart that has a heart to be present in Sunday school and, and the heart that has a heart to be present in midweek Bible study, then, then the Lord God can do the impossible with that heart. And so with that, let us open this morning here at the church with a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you, Lord God. We thank you, Father, for your divine purpose. We thank you, Father, for your divine will. We thank you, Father, for life in Christ in the National Church. We thank you, Father, for reaching lost souls one life at a time. Oh, God, Father, you continue to get all the glory. You continue to get all the praise. You, oh, great God, continue to get all the honor. Father, if there's illness, you get the glory, the honor, and the praise. Father, if there's homelessness or displacedness, Father, you get all the glory, all the honor, and the praise. Father, if there's an earthquake, oh great God, you get all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Father, if there's hunger and starvation, oh great God, you, Father God, get all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Father, that's where we sit ourselves in you and with you and through you and by you, oh great God, in this divine month of hope. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would continue to have your way. May your anointing, O oh God, be upon the reading of our Sunday school lesson. May your anointing, O oh great God, be upon the reading of your word. We honor you for it now. We bless you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. As we go into our Sunday school lesson this morning, I was, um, and, and I love how uh, the Lord helps me. That's what I say. I love how the Lord helps me. As I was preparing for Sunday school time, the Lord brings different ones into my spirit, into my heart. And to not go into detail or to spend six to 12 hours praying, there's three things that came to heart. And, and I felt the need to share this this morning because you may not have beautiful words when it comes to praying. You may not have 12 hours to spend um, 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 in worship and in prayer. Um, you may have to feed your kids or, or uh, you may have to work. But these three things came to heart um, in a quick prayer this morning. Father, provide for them. Father, keep them safe. Father, allow them to be prosperous. Those are the three things. And, and God is a conversational God. You, you may not have the words, but if you say, Lord, keep me safe. Lord, protect me. Lord, provide for me. Lord, allow me to be prosperous. So those are all three key things that the Lord provides for us here at the church in this month of divine hope. And so with that, let us get into our Sunday school lesson this morning. Um, it was a family that had come to heart that I haven't uh, spoke with in many, many years. But, but just because we're not in the physical vicinity, that doesn't mean that God is not who he is. And we thank the Lord this morning that they may be far, far, far away. I may have not had the opportunity to speak with them in years, but the Lord can put them on my heart. That's the kind of God we serve. 
and 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 you can send a prayer up to heaven and know that whatever it is whatever is going on whatever the need is whatever the petition is god is at work on their behalf and so this morning during our sunday school lesson the title of this sunday school time is old and new our devotional reading for this week was coming from Jeremiah chapter 7, verses 1 through 15. And that devotional reading kind of prepares our hearts for what this lesson will teach us this morning. Our background scripture will be this morning, Romans chapter 7, verses 1 through 25. We won't get to read uh, uh, all of the verses. So, so. If you haven't already, I do want to encourage you to go back and read the entirety of our background scripture this morning. Why? Because that helps gives a fuller context of what our Sunday school time is teaching. And our key text this morning is coming from Romans chapter 7, verse 6. Um, and that's what we're going to read in just a second. We're going to recap to cover the two lesson outlines that we have this morning. Our two lesson outlines this morning is a, a, a bondage of the law. And we're going to read that in Romans chapter 7, verses 1 through 6. And then the second lesson outline we're going to cover this morning is bondage of sin. And we're going to read that in Romans chapter 7, verses 7 through 12. So, with that being said, let us get right into our key text this morning. Romans chapter 7, verse 6 in the King James Bible reads, Now we are delivered from the law, that being dead, wherein we were held, that we should serve in um, newness of spirit and not in the uh, oldness of the letter. That's where uh, uh, our key text, our, our foundational verse uh, uh, sits us in this Sunday school time this morning. Verse six says, but now we are delivered from the law that being dead wherein we were held that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. This is a good lesson. This is, this is a good key text for us. This is a good foundational verse for us this morning. Even as we sit here at the church in a month of hope, and the reason I say that is because God is, is alive. God's word is active and alive. And our walk day to day, our, 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 our relationship, it's alive. Our relationship with the Lord is alive. It's constantly growing. It's constantly moving. Our verse this morning reminds us that we are not dead in the letter, but we're alive in the spirit of the living God. And so what does that mean for us? We may be facing some circumstances. But we, uh, uh, and that circumstance may be trying to take us out 110%. But hear me, the mighty God, the spirit of the living God is at work in us. And God's divine outcome and divine result will manifest itself. So these are our two lesson outlines. Bondage of the law. Romans 7, verse 1 through 6, bondage of sin, Romans 7, verses 7 through 12. This is what I'll say for those two in it, those two outlines. And, and our Sunday school lesson is going to teach us. Bondage of the law, it is divinely important that we recognize divine conviction. That doesn't mean that the law goes away. No, the law is there to convict. We have to know the law. But we have the spirit of the living God to help us to fulfill the law. And that fulfillment comes through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And 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 <laughs> the Sunday school lesson probably won't teach all of that. But what, what, I'm, what I'm trying to remind us of, we can't discard the law. We can't reject the law. We have to have a healthy respect of the law. And we know that the help of the almighty God helps us to fulfill the law through and with and by Christ Jesus alone. And so 
that takes us into the bondage of sin. Here's, here's a very, uh, um, I'd say, menial example. You, 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 you could say like, well, I lied, so I can't pray today. You, you can say things like, well, I thought about stealing, so, so I can't worship or serve God or give my life to the Lord. That's the bondage of sin. Sin uh, 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 encourages the separation from your rightful place in God. Yes, God is concerned about sin, but that sin is just a reminder and an and urgent, a, a warning that that's why we need to cry out and to call upon God. So, so, so I'm, I'm excited about this lesson, the richness of the Sunday school time that we have here. We need this. You hear me say, uh, 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 our arsenal, we need this in our walk and our relationship with the Lord. It is divinely imperative that we recognize the law and ask God's grace to fulfill the law and our walk and our relationship with him in this life. You might smoke cigarettes. You might smoke weed. You might drink alcohol. You might watch porno. Hear me this morning. God is a deliverer. God is our savior. But it's a choice that you, on a personal level, have to make between you and God. You can't do it because I tell you it's wrong. You can't do it because your mom or your dad tell you it's wrong. You have to want to do better and be better yourself before God uh, uh, can hear that and, and, and respond to that. And so we thank God for that this morning. The Lord is, hear me when I say it, removing the yoke of bondage. Hear me when I say it this morning, the Lord is removing the yoke of bondage. And so we go into our first lesson outline, bondage of the law. Read with me in the book of Romans, the seventh chapter, we're reading the first through the sixth verse. I need a little bit more light. <laughs> that help me to see better. Amen. All right. So in the King James Bible, the book of Romans, the seventh chapter, the first through the sixth verse. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over man as long as he liveth. For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. Verse 3, so then, that while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from the law, so that she is no adulteress though she be married to another man. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. Verse 5, For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death, Verse 6, but now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the illness of the letter. To really touch upon this divine lesson this morning, it's it's. A fine line, that's what I'll say. It, it's a fine line. And the reason I say that is because sin is sin. Um, um, and the law is the law. And if you break the law, then breaking the law is sin. And 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 so we cannot be ignorant of the law. But it is the grace of God, I'm try and keep it as simple as possible, 
that, 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 that because of Christ Jesus, because of the shedding of his blood, because of the price that he paid, the law is fulfilled through Christ. So we know that the scripture tells us that if we, we, we sin, then, then the law requires that that sin cause death. But because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ, we sin, we repent, the blood of Jesus cleanses us, washes us anew. And our Sunday school lesson teaches us this morning not to walk as condemned people, not to live as condemned people by the law, but to operate and to flow and live according to the newness of the spirit, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of the living God. How do you do that? You have to cultivate your walk in your relationship with the Lord. You have to uh, uh, read the word of God. You have to sup with the Lord, spend time in prayer to know the nature, essence, and the character of God. To know what pleases and honors the Lord. This is not something that, and I don't want to be facetious, you just snap your fingers and then you know all about God. You know all about the things of God. No. It, it, it takes life circumstances. Where, where, where God gets in the trenches with you, if, if, if I can explain it that way. And then you begin to cultivate your faith walk and 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 so we we honor god for that opportunity because he couldn't leave us lost we we honor god for 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 who he is because he could leave leave us not knowing and so this morning our sunday school lesson our very first outline is teaching us about bondage of the law and it's clear that we are to obey the law that's clear uh, we we are to fulfill the law, and that fulfillment is in Christ Jesus. We there has to be a healthy respect of the law. There has to be a conviction to to live righteously, to live holy, to live true unto God and true unto the things of God. And so that's why there's a healthy respect for the law. But at the same time, because of the Spirit of God. Because we have repented and we're covered and, 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 and atoned and, and renewed and restored by the blood of Jesus Christ, we live in the freedom of the Spirit. And so our Sunday school lesson is teaching us, and um, I want to read this if I can, and, and you guys are going to have to bear with me because I'm going to have to use this light um, so that I don't miss nothing in our reading. Our Sunday school lesson says, for Paul to speak to them, that know the law probably indicates the intended audience to have been those Christians who were of Jewish background. So they knew the law because they were of Jewish background. Our Sunday school lesson says his presentation at this point is characteristic of the intrinsic argumentation of the learned rabbi of the day. And, and this is what I want to say, if that's okay with you all. Even as Christian believers, we do it. We argue what we know. We boast about our knowledge and our anointing and our giftings and our titles and our position and what we did and what we built and how we sang. And we do it. It's, it's, it's a part of our human nature and God recognizes that. But here's the thing. We got to get the lesson that, that, that the word of God is teaching us this morning. Let us not live in that bondage, but let us live in the freedom of the spirit. Our Sunday school lesson continues. It says, Paul begins with a basic legal principle, one that is not confined to the law of Moses. Laws don't apply to dead people. Our Sunday school lesson says, a corpse cannot be charged and convicted of death even if the dead body belonged to a person who was a thief before dying. In that sense, death nullifies any dominion a law might have over a person. We're alive in the spirit of the living God. Our Sunday school lesson teaches to illustrate this, Paul uses the customs of marriage. 
So the customs of marriage is an example. And to me, he made it plain. And, and, and hear me when I say this. That's why you hear me say all the time, cultivate your faith walk. Cultivate your walk and your relationship with the Lord so that you can understand what our Sunday school lesson is teaching about the intricacies of God, the intricacies of the things of God, the bondage of the Lord. Here, here if, if I can make it plain, and we're going to go to our second lesson outline. Here's the thing. The law says a woman who is married uh, 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 will break the law if she uh, 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 marries a man, she will be considered an adulteress. But if the husband is dead and she marries a man, then she's not in bondage of the law anymore. And I'm trying to keep this simple. So what that means for us, and, and our Sunday school lesson teaches it, it's even in the word of God. Because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ on the cross, because of the finished work of Christ Jesus, we are no longer in bondage of the law because Christ fulfilled the law. His death, burial, and resurrection fulfilled the law. So we live free. We have the privilege, we have the opportunity to live free. But if you keep rehearsing and if you keep practicing that old way, that old man, that old nature, then the enemy is going to use that time and time again. You used to smoke cigarettes. You used to get high. You used to steal, all those things. But the newness, and our Sunday school lesson is going to teach us in just a second, but the newness of the spirit, once you give your life to Christ, you're baptized by the power of the Holy Spirit, you're cultivating your walking relationship with the Lord. The word of God says the old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. I don't want us to think that that's a one-time thing. Because as human beings, we're constantly growing, we're constantly evolving. So every single day, this is a Bible study lesson. If you were in an abusive relationship and, and uh, 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 by the power of God, the Lord removed you from that abusive relationship, 10 years down the road, somebody might raise their hand at you and you flinch. And you're no longer in that abusive relationship. You're no longer associated with that abusive relationship. But the residue. And so that's why you hear me say cultivate daily. Sin leaves stain. Sin leaves residue. And each day we're walking faithfully in and with the Lord. That stuff is chipped off. It's removed. It's removed. It's removed. Until you get a little bit further down the road and somebody lifts their hand and you're operating and, and, and uh, flowing in the power of God. You say, Satan, the blood of Jesus Christ is against you. Satan, the Lord God rebuke you. Satan, that is not me. That was never supposed to be me. Return it back to cinders in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus. That doesn't come overnight. You're growing your relationship with the Lord. You're growing in your walk in your, your relationship with the Lord. You're growing and maturing in God. You're growing and maturing in the things of God. That's what this Sunday school lesson is about this morning. The old and the new. God doesn't want us to be ignorant to his promises. God doesn't want us to be ignorant to our divine purpose in him. But the enemy, oh my gosh, the enemy would... Lord have mercy. So let us go to our second lesson outline this morning. Our second lesson outline, bondage of sin. Reading Romans chapter 7, verses 7 through 12. Romans chapter 7, verses 7 through 12 in the King James Bible reads, What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had known sin. But by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. Verse 8, but sin, 
taking occasion by the commandment, brought in me all manner of concupiscence. Without the law, sin was dead. Verse 9. For I was alive without the law once. But when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. Verse 10. And the commandment, which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. Verse 11, for sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slew me. Verse 12, wherefore, the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. You heard me say this morning that we have to have a healthy respect of the law. You, you, you heard me say this morning that the law convicts and Lord have mercy if we're so hard and if we're so sin sick that we no longer respond to the conviction of God. And, and, and that's why I say cultivate. That's why I say we have to continue to nourish our walk and our relationship with the Lord. When I was a young minister, our, our, our assistant pastor um, an awesome woman of God. She she would always tell us young ministers uh, in our walk in our relationship with the Lord and in this world to to be successful to to survive this journey that we're on. She would always say, "Come to the line, but no further," meaning that the world will offer you absolutely everything there and there is not nothing in this world that the world will not offer you if if the enemy can trick you to come to his side if, if the enemy can trick you to fall and and to succumb to his tactics and tricks and and here in america this is a wealthy nation we get the first gadgets but there's no a limit of, 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 of resources or money or opportunity. But, but, but we have to hold to that bloodstained banner. We have to uh, be in the world, but be not of this world. And, and so when we talk about the bondage of sin, and, and you hear me say all the time, it's a personal choice. Even in community, even when, when you're in your clique or in your group, it's a personal choice. And, and I honor God that he gives us the grace to see, to know, and to recognize. But at the end of the day, did you decide to go with the group, to go with what's popular? Did you decide to obey the divine will of the Lord. And, and that's why this lesson is rich for us this morning. This is a lesson for application. And, and hear me, we don't get it right every single time. I don't want us to think that, but we have a God that's right there to pick us up and to help us to continue to press for the mark, for the prize of the upward call of God in and through and by Christ Jesus. So let's take a look. Let's see what our Sunday school lesson teaches us about our second lesson outline, bondage of sin. And, and I love how the Lord graces us to be able to spend this time with him um, during this Sunday school time uh, with, with the meat of the matter, with, with things that we really need to focus on and really need to have in our life and have in our walk and our relationship with him. And so our Sunday school lesson teaches us, it says, if death to sin frees us from the denomination of the law, excuse me, the dominion of the law, then what is the purpose and value of the law? This is a concern often debated in the history of the church and even today. It can be framed more broadly as questioning the value and the applicability of the Old Testament to the Christian and the church, Paul often drives his teachings with theoretical questions. 
These are questions he asked for which the answer is obvious. By having the readers answer these questions as they read, they follow Paul's line of thinking in the direction he desires. In this case, Paul anticipated that his readers would ask themselves, is the law sin? He has drawn many parallels between sin and the law. Both have been described as having enslaving dominion over humankind. So it is important to recognize that there is no sin without the law's definition. That is not a, and that's where we're going to stop this morning. That is not a get out of jail free card. That's not what this lesson is, is teaching us this morning. If you're dead, then you don't have to worry about the consequences of sin. We're not on that garbage crab crab bucket level. We're reaching to honor God. We're reaching to live a life that glorifies God. We're reaching to get it right and to know how to get it right. And, and, and so that's why it's important to recognize the bondage of law and where we sit at in God with that because of the Christ, because of the shed blood of Jesus and what the bondage of sin is. If you, if you stole when you were six years old, and this is just an example, and you're 75 years old today. You live as a thief for all of that time. No, that's what not what the Lord is, is teaching us this morning. What the Lord is teaching us is that we recognize our sin. We repent and we ask God's forgiveness for that sin. And then we live free because of the power of the Holy Spirit. We don't practice those behaviors. We don't hang around those kinds of people. We, we don't do that anymore. The Lord has lifted us up out of that. We're no longer in bondage of sin because of Jesus Christ. And, and so we don't live like a crackhead if we no longer smoke crack. You know, we, we don't live like a drug dealer if we're no longer dealing drugs or living in bondage to those things. That's what the Lord is showing us this morning. That's the level where God has taken us and where God wants us at. And, and it comes, and you hear me say it all the time, in cultivating our walk and relationship with the Lord. And the Lord gracing us to recognize his nature, his essence, his character, recognizing and doing what honors and glorifies God. Not just speaking about it, not just knowing about it, but from the inside out. And we honor God this morning for this lesson. As we close out, I do want to close with our Sunday school prayer. I said this prayer says, Lord God, may we never despise your laws. May you guard us from the deception of the world which claims that sin is good and satisfying. May your spirit continue to form us to be more and more like your son Jesus, the one without sin. We pray these things in his name. Amen. This is a rich lesson this morning. I'm glad the Lord blessed us to be able to have this time in him. We were able to cover our first lesson outline, bondage of law in Romans 7, 1 through 6. We were able to cover bondage of sin in Romans 7, verses 7 through 12. As we close out this morning, I do want to remind us to govern ourselves accordingly. We have our end of month worship coming up on Sunday, October 15th. Every Thursday, we have our midweek Bible study lesson here at the church. We're in the month of divine hope. We're being intentional about getting to the word of God, about what the word of God teaches us about divine hope. We're praying for our international pastors as the Lord blesses us to do our, our annual love offering for our international pastors. Pastor John in India, Pastor Kiram in Pakistan, Pastor Samson in Kenya, and Pastor Ilmark in the Philippines. We're praying for our youth Christmas outreach. They're about to have their Christmas celebration on December 8th. So we're going to celebrate them as we close out this year. As you heard me say during our midweek Bible study, we're finishing the year strong and we're going into 
preparing to go into 2024. With that being said, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. May the Lord God continue to strengthen you, keep you, protect you, and provide for you and keep you prosperous. In Jesus' name, we'll see you back here Thursday evening for our midweek Bible study lesson.